Uh oh. One of them, the battery was going. Oh, uh, this one is too. Both of them. We'll see how yeah. long they both last. All right, we'll do our best. All right, there we go. We got them. Okay, so it's uh, September 18th, 2023 at 6.39. This is the Recreation and Parks Committee. In attendance is Councilperson Martin, Here. Mayor Southerd, and myself, uh, Councilperson Cameron. Um, okay, so um, uh, should we start with the big thing or the small stuff? Whichever one, we start anywhere you want. All right. Let's just get through some of the soft, smaller stuff. Um, so, um, uh, playground, I think we talked about this last meeting. I'll bring up to finance uh, when we start doing budgets about getting just maybe those um, bouncy things or whatever. And I haven't heard from planning and zoning what their recommendations were officially, but. Um, it was pretty much that. Okay. And then I wanted to talk about the mulch, what we want to do next year moving forward for the mulch, because yeah. the inexpensive mulch was like a thousand. I feel like the tire stuff, which I can um, find the old emails mm -hmm. or just tell you who I called. Mm -hmm. I want to say it was like five to ten, something like that. I can't remember. I, I really can't remember. And yeah. Our emails, like you said, don't go back. Yeah, right. Um, so, yeah, I think that that's something, a budget item for next year that I want to see about doing. Um, you know, uh, kind of tying into the Minerva Forum meeting that we had the other day, JP. Um, so, so the mayor and I met with um, Carrie and uh, uh, Lisa, talked about Minerva Floors, uh, uh, how their involvement would be. Um, one of the things I talked about was um, just kind of our parks in general, starting to make them look like parks mm -hmm. around the community. So I don't have any, I don't have anything financial, like I don't know, like what that looks like yet and what those pieces would be, but I imagine it would be a several year project to kind of get some things going um, at the parks, but just some beautification and some consistency um, in all of our public spaces, I guess. So I would think like the pool would be one thing. I think the playgrounds would be another. I think along the lake, the path along the lake and down to the um, amphitheater would be another area and possibly the entrances and just trying to tie them all together and kind of a look and feel that says Minerva Park with, with our flowers and our lighting and whatever else might be there. Um, so I know that that's a lot of um, planning involved with that, but I'll see what I can come up with. And I know Minerva Flora said that they'd be willing to kind of help with some of that planning as well. Um, which kind of brings me to Minerva Flora. So we have tentatively agreed, well, maybe actually agreed, that they would supply the labor and the village would supply the materials for whatever they take on in the park. So that, that might mean the mulch, we pay for the mulch, we pay for the flowers, um, but they would do the, the labor of installing all that stuff. Um, they're going to go through the... Um, I think they're going to hit the end of Green Line and Minerva Lake Road, those, that entrance and the two beds that go along the entrance there first, as well as cleaning up the courts, the five courts, or the five of them? Yeah. Um, making sure that those are done. And then if they have time and the availability and their team is willing to take on a little extra, we talked about possibly replacing some of the plants that died at the far view entrance over here, some of that boxwood and whatnot, um, just to get that entrance going back to where it was. So, um, so that's the plan with that. Um, I think in addition to all that, my recommendation for next year is that, you know, we we need to we need to think through the landscaping company if we're going to continue using them, um, which I don't necessarily have a problem with, but um, we need to make sure that they're doing the areas that we want them to do. And then the other thing is, I think we need to, you know, we spend a lot of money buying bags of mulch for certain areas of the village, and it's probably more financially sound to get a truck of the mulch yeah. and, you know, haul it around. Which is what we do for the playground. Right. Yeah. It, and we can do that early in the season before the grass cutting even starts, um, especially if we can get some labor hired early in the season. 
maybe even if it's a college student that's local now and moves away for the summer and has mm -hmm. to you know, switch them back and forth. I don't know. Um, but I also know we have some other things going on there as well. So that's my recommendation. That will be as we go talk about finances for next year. That's kind of what I'm going to think. Or that's what I'm going to do. And I've already told John that. You know, we don't need to be paying the lifeguards to be doing this at the pool. We should have our own staff do this um, and get it maintained. So, any questions there? Mm -hmm. Okay. I have two questions. Yes, sir. Do we have any colors or anything like that? Like when you talked about mulch colors? Well, not necessarily mulch colors, but to tie everything in. That's just the flowers. Like, do we have like a manure park color? Somebody needs to pick it. That's, that's, that's the, the ground. Okay. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I think it needs to go with. Um, what will survive with the least amount of water and <laughs> right. care. Because some of those areas don't have water right. nearby. Right. And unless we're going to get, you know, one of the big things that goes in the back of the truck. And again, I don't know how easy those are to move back and forth because you can't use the truck for mulch and then turn it. I don't, I don't know right. how heavy those are once they're empty or right. how easy they are. I, I don't, I, was, I, I have no idea. I was just asking because there's a cohesiveness around mm -hmm. the way making our park mm -hmm. feel like we're here. I, mean, I didn't know, like, if we had any... That's our job. Yeah. Right. I mean, well, I, mean I like, like the way Blendon Township kind of does theirs mm -hmm. down that strip. Oh, yeah. You that's know, nice. um, once you get over into Westerville, it's not, Yeah. it's consistent in that they're the same type of flower, but they're not always the same color flowers. Correct. They're same mm -hmm. colors. It's like whatever's on sale Which, that week. <laughs> well, I think they grow them themselves as well. Oh, probably. They own greenhouses. Yeah. But, um, you know, and I don't yeah. mind that, but I just, you know, I don't know. Um, well, I mean, and this is just, this is taking this a little bit of a step further. Mm -hmm. I'd be more than happy to set up a meeting with Five Seasons and okay. getting them to come in and say, you know, telling them this is, can you be prepared for this, but can you get us an idea of this is what we want to do this year, this is what, you know, if we yes. try to do this bed, this bed, and this bed, what would you recommend for, give us a couple different ideas and then prices. So, I mean, honestly, I think the first stop is bringing him in. He was super helpful the day that he came in. Um, I, I, they're, they're probably starting to wind down. Mm -hmm. So I would think like November, December, January. Yeah. I mean, let's I know that's not great for budgeting, but... Yeah, no, let's get him in and see if we can get some, him to put some prices together. Yeah. Um, even if it's next month. Yeah. Um, typically Friday mornings or maybe okay. morning, but... Um, yeah, just to get it. I mean, we don't all have to be there just to get them started yeah, to bring no, it I'd, to council. Yeah, I'd love to be there and just talk to them mm -hmm. about it. Um, which also comes to, I don't know if we want to pursue this or not. I did meet with, I know, sorry, I have not met with them yet. He's trying to set up the meeting, but the company that has the automated lawnmower. <laughs> Um, oh yeah. <laughs> so, and I was thinking just do it at the pool. Like it would be an easy place. It would be locked up because it's got the fence and everything. Um, I said, how much for you know? How much would something like that be? He said it's probably around six thousand. So you know, it is an upfront cost. But I think the nice thing is that we could probably set it up so John could turn it on at night. Yeah. You know, he could pull the chairs away and he could push a button that says go, and it works overnight or in that evening and it's done, right? Um, and we have one piece of property that we don't have to worry about in the village. Yes, that's you know, sure. I, um, I know that, you know, if you're looking at the cost of labor versus that thing, you, you gotta use it several years for it to pay for itself, oh. right? So- We didn't even have that whole area. Or yeah, I'm, I'm afraid to let it outside of the fence just you. because of that, <laughs> right, right? right? But, right. you know, it's a possibility. It could definitely do it, and if we can work towards, if we can get the new pool in there, it would be much bigger green space. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And that would be much better. Even getting a lawnmower into that new space, it would be a lot easier with this thing as opposed to um, a large machine. So I definitely love that idea. So I still need to meet with him um, and talk to him about that. Um, but I'll bring it, and if council decides to do it, they do it, and if they say no, then you know. Um, I think Westerville has had some success, success with it, so um, I always see the, the one over there at that park on Cleveland, So, because uh, it, it sits there. I did talk to Jeff. Um, sorry, now I'm going to skip the pools. Oh, you're fine. Um, I'm, you're making me think of things for John. So. Um, uh, so I did talk to 
Jeff about more pool chairs for next year. Yeah. Um, I said probably about 80 of them because we did 40 and 40, 40 right. of the regular chairs, 40 of the chase. Okay. Um, so I think if we do 80 chase for next year, um, I, of course, we have an issue in that we haven't paid for the ones we got this past year. And I've been emailing them back and forth. And last I heard, Jeff had not connected with them, but he thinks the second check has also come back to us. Yes. That's what I heard. So we got to figure out how to get them the check. They sent me their address. Okay. I forwarded over to Jeff, but I haven't heard anything from either side at this point. Okay. Um, Everybody's in. Everybody will be in all week. Okay. So maybe catch up tomorrow okay. would probably be good. Friday, um, it's going to be a mess. In, or Thursday, it'll be a mess in there. No, that's fine. Because nobody will. Um, I have to go to Lexington tomorrow, so I'll have some windshield time in the yeah. car that I can make calls. Yeah. <laughs> And I'll try to remember too. I mean, I'll be so, there tomorrow. So you know, another eighty chairs. It's, that would bring us up to hundred and sixty-eight chase lounges, yeah. which currently we have two hundred plus of the other ones. Um, you know, the conversation between Jeff and I was, let's just get rid of the other ones oh, and yeah. send them to a scrapyard or a salvage yard or whatever, and just be done with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, which I'm fine with. However. We did have several days during the summer, and I can count them on one hand where every one of those chairs were used, oh, including the very last day yep. that the pool was open, where I counted how many of the green chairs were left, and it was probably less than 30 total. So yeah. um, people like the new chairs, and oh, they're yeah. definitely using them. Oh, so. the, you, they're like Maseratis compared to the... Yeah. No. Yeah. And the so, sales. you know, I think if we do it, I asked if we could take it out of the um, improvement fund, and he said no. So I'm thinking of improvement for the pool, but right. whatever, it's fine. Um, it would be one less expense for the pool project. Should, yeah, absolutely. Should we get to that? So, yeah. which was they were they were estimating fifteen hundred dollars a chase, Jeez. and I think we were paying one two fifty or right. one eighty or something like and that. And then just so. so you know, we were planning on getting a few that are a little bit taller. Yes. Not a bunch, but they come 12, 14, 16. Um, we have the fourteen inch height right now, the middle size. I don't know if the sixteen would be high enough. I think the ones that Emily sent us were even taller than that, maybe eighteen. Um, but I, I can see what we can get with that. Um, so I know that. So the other big expense that that we're trying to get worked out is getting that pump replaced. So I don't know if you know that the pump for the pool served its last day on the last day of the pool. I did not know. I thought we, it was uh, on his last leg. That we had fans on it all day. It, if you it were finally, at the pool, you could smell it. <laughs> yeah. Like, it was burning hot. It finally bit the dust. Yes. I know it was on his I last mean, leg, but I didn't it didn't know. die, but... It's, it's, it's going to cause a fire. It's going, yeah, no, it, it's, so, it's getting replaced. Yeah. What did you say, 8,000? We think it was somewhere... When he was there giving the estimate, the number that I kept hearing was, like, around 8,000. Um, I just followed up to make sure that we don't have it in writing yet, and I do not have it in writing yet. Uh, so once I get it in writing, we'll get the PO and start yeah. get start. Perfect. Yeah. So we're trying to get that expense this year, I believe. Yes, as yes I'm to trying to get it done. Um, I, don't, I don't think we have the final, final numbers for the pool this year. However, what I can see in Square, which does not include everything, we were at over 110,000. Okay. Okay. Last year the pool did concession and pool, 100 is what Jeff had told me. So we know we're at least 10,000 ahead of last year, which is actually pretty good because our membership was pretty flat. Yeah. Um, but um, the concession stand actually did really well. Oh yeah. And I'm pretty sure that um, our vendor sent us stuff that we didn't pay for. <laughs> so uh, Even better. Know, that's on them, but... Um, yeah, the concession stand did well. We've learned a few things. I think I think we need to not have as many workers for oh, one because yeah. they all got second jobs because they weren't getting enough hours. So then it was hard to get them to work mm -hmm. at the concession stand. So that was one thing. Um, Hour-wise, I think we're fine, but I don't think we really ever needed two people no. at the same time. I agree. You know, it got busy, but... Didn't need that you know, I don't know that it ever got too busy. We're not cooking food or anything, so I think we can cut that back as well. Um, but other than that, there's, I don't anticipate a lot of expenses for the concession stand next year. Are we going like, to try to figure out how to get 
hot water in there at all, or are we just going to cross our fingers and just hope they do the same thing they did last time? I'm going to hope they do the same thing. Okay. So I'm not going to worry about it. Yep. Unless we'll get her up early enough, fortunately. The yeah, we'll be ready for it. In the yeah. concession stand is the concession stand stuff, so I can get that operational as soon as we get the water turned on in yep. the pool um, and get that hot water tank turned back on. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Are we going to have more sales? A lot of people love that. Like, what do you mean, the sunshade? Yeah, the sunshade sales. You know, I don't think, don't at this point, I'm not planning to install anymore. I know that people liked them, but I, yeah. it was a lot of work to put those in. Yeah. It wasn't expensive. Like, it wasn't It wasn't the most expensive thing we did at the pool. It was pool, just to get the holes But in. it was a big pain to oh, get yeah. those in. And um, if we're going to tear them out, it's I find it hard to spend the money okay. if it's only going to be for a season. Right. So I think yeah. as we go into the next year, if we know where we're at with the pool, you know, yeah. then we can decide maybe in the spring, hey, yes, let's go ahead and put Add in a more. couple more sections. Yeah. Maybe we put it on the other side, close to the volleyball court. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. Um, oh, the, the fencing, the temporary tarp fencing, is that going to be temporary or are we going to add more to give privacy to the pool? Um, it helped block a lot of the dust. Um, it's like a little black So it, it blocked a lot of the dust. We're hoping that the dust is going to be gone. I will tell you that there was... Um, some people did not want it up. I actually liked it up. I, don't, I think it's weird having people staring that are sitting in the parking lot staring in there at whatever. Yeah. But at night, and, and there's, there's always, you know, it's nice to get other people's opinions. At night, it's very difficult to see inside the pool. So there's no way to know if there's somebody that's just snuck in or anything like that. The police officers can't see in there. So there's there's a, it, it's nice for privacy, but it's not nice for privacy. So it's just kind of weighing the options. Is it worth it? Is it not worth it? I just meant the one side. One oh, I agree. I, I think we could do the, the, pool, or the, the school, school side, side of it. Yeah. In Probably case there's football and people. That wasn't expensive. And we can no, they're $50 the, for oh, like 100 yeah. feet or so, whatever it was. Yeah, we can pull um, so that is something that we can, and we can talk about it. My plan was not to remove it this year. It might destroy it. I'm not sure. Um, but by the time you rip all of it down, I think it could potentially, I don't, at this point I'm planning on leaving it up and seeing what it looks like next year. And then if we want to add some more, we can definitely do that. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the biggest part is, is other than football practice during the day, um, so school isn't even, even going to start. Summer. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. school doesn't even start until August. Right. So. And then by and then, then we're closing. Practice might even be in the morning before mm -hmm. the pool opens. Correct. So That's the only we may not see them at all. Exactly. So, so I mean, I actually did. I mean, I loved it over by the baby pool because I do feel like you don't have random people just like staring in there. But I do understand the safety, um, the safety of, you know, in, in the event somebody did sneak in there at night, you wouldn't be able to see them. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So, now we're just going to kind of talk about the pool for the rest of the night. So I did some... Um, we'll see about that. Okay. <laughs> I'm checking my emails. <laughs> All right. So if we want to start selling memberships in January, I kind of did some backtracking. Um, the, do we have one or two council meetings usually in November? It's usually one in two. November. We do have two. Two in November, but they're back-to-back. -back. So we'll actually have three meetings in a row, the work session. Okay. And actually, let's talk about this really fast. Uh -huh. um, Actually, we will not. We have to talk about that before we leave here. I understand there's only two of you guys, but we have to be... Actually, we'll just do it right now. We have a work session in October. Mm -hmm. We have a work session in November. We have one in December. I know it's important for some people to make sure that we get this code rewrite discussed and talked about as quick as possible. Mm -hmm. If we focus the October work session for that, then we either need to have another meeting for budget or vice versa. And I'm in the recommendation of if you, then you're not talking about any of the other work session stuff. So everything else is getting put on the back burner. I just, I guess I'm volunteering to um, create another two hour meeting at some point think, in time. I and think we have to have another okay. meeting to get through this. Yeah. I just think the work session is not necessarily and legislative is not long enough. It can be talked about in there and maybe right. get through a couple paragraphs, yeah. but I think you guys need to talk about doing that. Mm -hmm. So then that moves on to mm -hmm. the October. You would have October work session to kind of bring up the fees and do all that right. kind of stuff. I mean, if not, nothing is going to be talked about except for the code rewrite. Right? And right. I don't think stopping everything else. Agreed. I think that's going to be hard 
to do that. Um, we're already having a lakes meeting in August. So you have the two readings in October, two in November, one in December. But if you do not pass it as an emergency, let's look at it this way. Can't sell you can't sell so it until... What I have is readings on the 12th, October 12th, October 26th, and November 9th. And that well, would we wouldn't be... have a second one, so we could miss the 12th meeting and do the 26th and 9th and whatever the next one is and still get it. It'd be the 16th. Okay. So then, so yeah, it's back to back. So we would have the work session and then two meetings in November back to back. Um, and then, yes, it would pass by yeah. the 30 days would be in December. Right. Other than that, if we didn't do that, which I think we can. I think we can, too. That's why I brought all this stuff, yeah. because I want us to I'm start good. the conversation. Um, this is a big topic. However, I think the bigger topic is... Um, as you're doing that also, we can get the legislation ready yes. and have the first reading and then hopefully by the second reading so everybody can start seeing it and then the third reading. Yes, correct. I'm a huge fan of at least getting it out there to get it read. All right, so our pool software. Yes. You know, we make it work, right? Correct. And it costs us right now, this past year's fees were 336 for the software. Okay. Um, we would have to go to the annual software, which would be 420 or at least that's the current price. It probably okay. would be a little more than that right. if we go to annual. We have pieced stuff together, right? We use Square, we use Jotform. It's a little bit of work yes. for the office staff. Yes. Um, I looked up who Worthington Pool uses. They use a company, um, which I'm going to forget the name of it right now. Because we glanced at it too. I can't remember what it is. Um, uh, it's called Wopo, I think. And this is software that will tie in not only sales, but also oh, memberships. Oh, Pool Dues is the name of it. Pool Dues. Okay. Their pricing for their software is, I don't know if this is a starting price or if this is everything, but it's $2,000. Big difference in price. Right. However, and I don't know, I, I haven't demoed this, I don't know anything about it. This is just kind of their site right here. So you have your members only set you have your members section where people sign up, right? They have the billing section. So if we want to do where you can pay for your membership over the course of they that's all set up inside of this software. They have a front desk software, they have a reservation. They use this for their shelter house to okay. reserve the shelter house. Yep. So we can kill two birds with one stone and that we can add the shelter house reservation into this as well. Yeah. Um, well, you're going to have the shelter house, you're going to have the community building, and hopefully, exactly. eventually, yes. we're going to have the pool. Yeah. Um, facil I don't know if facility and reservation. This might be like reserving the pool for events. The facility might be the one. There's a communication section, so you can design um, announcements and things to go out to the people that are members. Huh. Um, there's a store. I, can't, I don't see a concession stand really in there, but again, I haven't dug too deep into right. this, so I don't know if that would work or not. Um, there's, it does say guests and snacks. Um, actually, I think what they do is you pay for it. You buy like vouchers. Cards. Like you pay ten dollars and then you, they scan something okay. or something. I think that's what it is. They have a wait list and then you can sponsor stuff and, and that like if you want sponsors. Um, and this is the one that's two thousand. This is two thousand dollars. Sounds like it's best you just buy and pay for it. There's no. Or is that, we don't know. Do we know how much, like, and I, I know you haven't done too much, do we know how much their fees are, like? Um, so it hosts the current site, initial setup on ongoing backend administration, including security updates and daily backups, a website store connected to your PayPal account, so it does use PayPal instead of Square Card Reader. Okay. That may reduce fees, but I'm not positive. Okay. So, um... Membership product setup and import of your current membership database, unlimited product creation and store sales, a front page redesign, recreation of essential pages, unlimited reservable courts, pool areas, fitness areas, uh, automated facility party rentals, a waitlist module, built in communication, sponsorship sale module, another huge river, revenue generator for our clients. Um, front desk check-in iPad apps for attendance, or there's a self-check-in available. There's an iOS app for members to reserve courts, lanes, tables, cabanas, whatever. There's no setup fee. 
a dedicated account manager, and no contract, and will lock in the price below for a minimum of three years. In 1999. Keep on. Benefit from reduced fees. Yeah, because they use PayPal. Oh, that's kind of cool. So right now we pay with, we use Square, so we get charged a percentage and a, and a flat amount each mm -hmm. transaction. See, that's what, I think that's, yeah, that's... I don't know. Uh, we could, I think if it can do it all in itself, and when I say do it all, I mean process the memberships completely, take the payment, right? So now Barb's not involved with processing memberships. The front desk isn't involved with doing memberships. If it can sell the guest passes as well, we've pretty much eliminated the front desk doing everything but checking people in. Right. Because it would all be done online. How are you? Now, it's $1,500 more, more than that, $1,600 more than we're currently paying. It also would take on the pavilion, though, uh -huh. instead of us having to create a job for them and all that type of stuff. So I'd like us to do the demo on it and just yeah. kind of really, really review it and see it. So maybe, um, maybe Jeff and Leah mm -hmm. or... You know, I'll be happy to be there. Barb, I don't know who else. Yeah, front desk. I have no problem doing it. Um, I think we should look at it, and mm -hmm. if it's the right thing to do, it's the right thing to do. And I've already downloaded does, everything. Out this of, is not. Who does JC use? Do they use anything? I, I don't know. I'm just curious. Only because I feel like they're, and I don't want to say more of a budget pool, but they're they don't have the huge Westerville. And they might not use anything. I mean, they might not. I'm just curious. Um, I don't know that they... They might not. I don't know that they do. That's, I don't think they do. Okay. Well, that's not. Um, so, and I don't know, uh, uh, Westerville uses a pretty robust system. Yeah, they, they use have, it for their recs. They I mean, use the, the Westerville Rec Center and all that type of stuff. Okay. It's, it's a membership program right. type thing. I'm sure it's... No, I was just curious if there was one other one to compare things. while we're doing it. You know, it's very hard to find anything like this, especially when you're a small community. So, but I don't think $2,000 is too bad, to be no. honest with you. Have we well, I, I think no one really understands what it's like. You know, you have part-time employees, mm -hmm. one full-time employee, you add an entire pool season and you put all of this on top of everything else, it, it, it does become extremely um, difficult to mm -hmm. add in another full-time job to yeah. all of that stuff during the same time. Because it's only three months, but... Yeah, but up until the pool opened, it was all barred, and then it yeah. moved over to the pool staff who basically had to learn it from scratch. Correct. And I got pulled into so many... Every five minutes. Yeah. yeah, especially with membership signing up, we can't find the payment, we can't do this, and Correct. it would be nice to have it all together. Yes. So, I'd like to look at it. I don't know that that's my recommendation, but I think let's look at oh, it. Oh, I, I I'm not in disagreement with, again, time is money. We spend yeah. a lot of time mm -hmm. at the office with a lot of employees, yeah. making sure that I mean, this is done. We can, we can build what we want to do with what we have, right. but it's based off of some free labor, volunteer labor, and right. some, which, you know, we're trying to get away from. And I think the next part, and maybe you're going to hit this mm -hmm. as we move forward, but we can't operate the same way that we operated down there next year. You know, when you start talking about concessions, mm -hmm. who's going to order the food, who's going to, you know, we right. can't continue to, and right. it's not that we... It's not that you don't want to or volunteers don't want to. It's what if you're not able to. Mm -hmm. um, something comes up and, mm -hmm. you know, we've just had that, that situation this past week. So we have to get it to where we have multiple people that are able to do Absolutely. different things. Yeah. And at this point, having a concession, um, I don't want to say a manager or, you know, there's, there's multiple things that that's going to yeah. have to change in order to not have you pulled 500 times mm -hmm. in a summer. Yeah. It's not your job. Yeah, it, we need we need an assistant pool manager. I think that's I think that's the title. I think that's the you know job description was. It's got to be the concession stand. They got to be front desk. They got to be back up to John. Yeah. I mean, 
I think they got to run the concession stand too. So we're talking about, mm -hmm. you know, the money's kind of there already. Right. If you're talking between concession stand, front desk, and kind of all the other stuff, we kind of already have been spending it, but. Um, just making somebody actually responsible yeah. for some of these different things and yeah. more training on this is how, it, again, it's not rocket science, but it is a process. It's a very important process because if the numbers don't match with us being a government entity that, it, I mean, nobody wants to go through an audit with our numbers not right. adding up. Right. So they, the job is, we have to take the job seriously when it comes to making sure that at the end of the day, all the numbers match. I have done a little bit of research, I've not reached out to them yet, but a little bit of research with Cisco, okay. who, does, who supplies yeah. foods and foods, foods, <laughs> food. Um, they, they have a lot of chips and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and soft drinks, and mm -hmm. you know, maybe they become our supplier rather than Sam's Club and mm -hmm. Amazon and that type right. of stuff for, for getting that stuff. Mm -hmm. and though we could probably get it delivered yeah. um, as well. So now we're talking about gold gold metal delivering stuff in Cisco, and that's probably it. You know, right. Between the two of them, we're done. Um, and really, gold metal could probably just be our ice cream and those food, the, mm -hmm. um, the nachos, the pizza rolls, and the... How pizzas. do you feel like those did... Do you have a list of like the things that you're going to recommend we get next year and yeah. things that we aren't? I mean, in general, all of those food items were fantastic. The right. things that didn't sell this year were the baked lays. Yeah. Have ton, almost the whole thing left over those. It's crazy. The peanuts and the um, nuts did not sell. Yeah. We're like going on to eat them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And every day. And um, I have so many left over and I bought the least amount that you could buy. So right. it just wasn't worth Will it. Will any of those last for yeah. next year? I checked expiration dates on all of it. They all go before. Yeah. Anything that was going to last, so the cinnamon pretzels that we had don't expire until August of next year, okay. so they're in the freezer. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully they won't get freezer burned. And then um, I put the ice cream cups in there, although I, because I couldn't find the expiration date, I thought, well, worst case, I throw them out in the spring. Right. And then those freezer pops were the only other thing. Okay. All the ice cream, yeah, all the high-end ice cream sold. Yeah. So what was left were the things that I think they misdelivered, which were those fudge bars, the right. ice cream bars, and the dreamsicles. Because okay. uh, there's no way I ordered, it, it was like 12 mm -hmm. boxes worth of them, right. and I never ordered that many. Right. You know, I ordered two or three at a time, Right. because uh, they had freezer burn so bad at the end. Oh, gotcha. Um, other than that, you know, and the last day, I marked everything 50% off just to try to get rid of it. Yeah. Because I figured I'd rather make half of the money because we're still right. making money off of it and oh, not yeah. throw it away. Yeah. So pretty much all the chips were gone, the Doritos were gone, the Fritos were gone. Um, we still have some Lay's. I actually have a little bit of Takis left. Mm -hmm. um, the candy did not sell as well this year, but we also kept it all in the refrigerator. We didn't have any of it yeah. out. So I, I think, think maybe some signage. I did have the signs last yeah. year with the pictures and stuff. I think a lot of it is out of sight, out of mind yep. still. Even yep. if there's pictures, they think it's out. Right. So even if you have pictures, if they're not sitting there. Mm -hmm. And again, you're dealing with kids. A, yep. a lot of the kids, they don't. Um, so, no. I. There's And then there's a, um, there's a few more checks and balances or procedures that need to get put into place for the concession stand. We should have done... We should have had a regular cadence of checking our inventory numbers yes. and verifying that they were correct. And we yes. honestly only did it once for the whole summer. Right. Um, and so, you know, there'd be times that I'd be like, oh, I don't need to order this because it says we have eight, eight of them left. And they'd be like, hey, we're out of this. And I'm like, what? Right. Like, it says you have some. What's right. going on? Sometimes they just rang up the wrong thing, but yeah. um, whatever. And then... Um, the other issue with the concession stand was if someone wasn't working or if there was an issue, they always called me. Every every time. Yeah. And I know so, that. So, you know, hey, I can't make it to work today. Okay, well, you know, I'd text Devin and I'd be like, hey, can you find someone? But a lot of times he'd be like, hey, I'm out of town today. Mm -hmm. I mean, I haven't worked one day over there um, on like a Tuesday or something crazy like that. So, you know, we need to kind of get that process in place for them so they know who to contact. And I think we have to post their schedules in there somewhere. Oh yeah. Um, because where they had it on their phone with the teams, the square team app, 
Um, you gotta have that visual up. You just have to, you do, especially with the teenagers. I did. I, I, I see it. So. Well, and again, having a pool manager is going to eliminate all that. Mm -hmm. So, or not a pool manager. We have one, but right. the assistant that's actually over top of. So I, I, I know we're both on the same page when it comes to that. We have to have more. And this was the first time we knew that there was going to be yeah. hiccups and you know, this is what we know yeah, that needs to change yeah, for next year. I would, I'd say it was a very successful season for us overall. Mm -hmm. You know, we, you always learn from the mistakes oh, and, yeah. and we, oh, you know, we're just going to get better each year. Yeah. So, um, but all the food, all the food was good. We yeah. ended up with like eight of those pepperoni things left at the end of the summer. So, yeah, you know, good. I really think we did a good job with it um, yeah. overall. Oh, yeah. um, but those are the few things I think, no, let's not, let's not sell those next year. Um, and then, and then the other hard part, which Cisco might be able to help us with if we can get into that was, you know, sometimes I buy the Doritos and they'd be like $34 for a case. And then the next time when I, when I was out and I'd have to get it, it would be $64 for the right. same case. And so I'm like, it's hard to kind of set your prices when the product changes. If Drastically. Was, yeah, yeah, that's a drastic change, mm -hmm. right? You know, if it was just a couple bucks more. Pop can be like that too. I mean, it can, but I consistently bought it from Sand Club so last it's about year, the same, yeah. so it was pretty consistent. Okay. The nice thing would be like every once in a while they'd run a sale and so I could get it cheaper. Right. Um, but we're only talking a couple bucks. So. Yeah. You know, we sell it for a buck fifty. We paid about 51 cents a can yeah. for the soft drinks. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, I think, you know, I think the pool season was great overall. The pool looked good. Um, the crowds were good. Uh, you know, I don't know. We, we had asked a few people to leave the last day, refunded about $120 worth of pool fees that day between two parties. And it was 75 for one and 45 for the other, so whatever that adds up to. Whatever. Um, so, we, I'd like to kind of look through what we have and just kind of talk through some stuff. Um, so, first thing, um, the first thing is this map. So, you know, looking at where our customer base was, um, so right, here's us, right? We really kind of pulled down to Morris Road, over through Forest Park, mm -hmm. uh, maybe even a little up in here. Um, this was really kind of where the bulk of our members mm -hmm. came from. Um, this is, like I said, this is us. Here's um, Northland Pool, right? Yeah. Worthington is, is that Worthington? Yeah. yeah. Here's Worthington. This one is Westerville. No, that's the that park. This, that's uh, Highlands. Yeah. This one, is, I can't read it. So yeah. That's the... JC's. That should be JC. This is JC. Somewhere this in one's there. JC. Oh, yeah, this is Westerville okay. Park. That might okay. be the rec center run, I'm mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. And then, where's Amherst? Right, right there. here. Yep. So there's Amherst, right? So I couldn't find anything on this pool. Yeah, you know, this is us, right? So we're really, we're really it for this market, right? So we know that we can hit almost all of this with the things that we put in the school mm -hmm. stuff, oh, right? right? Because this is where all the kids that come to our schools here get pulled from right here, right? I don't, these are going to be city schools, so that, because there's a Forest Park Elementary School over here right. somewhere. So this is all Columbus City. I'm, I'm going to guess that somewhere up in here it changes into Westerville, but I'm not even positive if all of this would be. So this is uh, 270. Yeah. Is this Columbus? Is any of this Westerville in here? Huh. Westerville starts at 270. Okay. So this is where we need to focus. Any advertisement or anything that we do to promote our pool, right? That's what I was going to ask for the next question on advertising. Do we have a good budget for advertising? I mean, it all comes out of the pool budget. So, yeah. It's okay. yep. um, right now, the only thing we really do is um, book in a bag type things, flyers mm -hmm. in the schools, um, and then our, our basic Facebook pages and things like that that Barb. Um, post, you know, pool season's coming, our website, it's, you know, everything is on there. And then, of course, we have our signs that we put throughout right. our village, but right. that's pretty much it. We do get some people from the next neighborhood over, for sure. Like you said, I mean, there, there's a lot of them. Yeah. We have some that live right by Northland, um, Northland's pool mm -hmm. that come here. They love our pool. Yeah. Um, so, here's, 
here's the thing, let's just be honest. Northland, Northland Pool is in their last days. Oh, yes, I agree. There's no way this pool is going to make it much longer okay. unless they can find some money to replace it. Right. Um, as a matter of fact, when I went onto their site today to pull this off, they were already starting a fundraiser for next year. Mm -hmm. Their target is $15,000 just to help get the pool open and ready for the season, um, of which $50 was already donated towards it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, I didn't print out ours. I had a suggestion of three signs, mm -hmm. and like the signs, like the banners that we have a little mm -hmm. um, night out. Maybe one on Cleveland, one on 161, and one on West Hill for the main entrances in case that people maybe got a door dash. Oh, there's a pool in the neighborhood? I don't oh, know. Yeah. Just because a lot of people that have come here, mm -hmm. but I like, there's still a pool there? I thought that, you know, all these years. Mm -hmm. people well, and quite up. honestly, of the pool signs that we did put up, we put them up in the neighborhood. We don't put oh. them up at the entrance <laughs> there, so yeah, we really probably should move some of them yeah. to like the Farview 161 entrance Absolutely. to get the school traffic. Yeah, I was going to say. The and just to remind the parents, I mean, you have the parents, parents that are driving in and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. I mean, let's just be honest, you put something in a kid's backpack and it's the last two yes. weeks of school. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm done by then. I, I'm, oh, my yeah. mind's done. Yeah. I was yeah. just thinking, like, a Farview, that's a lot of entry, like, a lot of traffic. The, um, whenever, like, Westerville, and yep. then something, whatever the most high traffic Cleveland Avenue entrance mm -hmm. is, like that. It would even be nice if we did get these set before, um, that we send something like this home before kids for the holidays, like mm -hmm. Christmas yeah. mm -hmm. and, you know. Uh, uh, and that could line up with yeah. our January pre-memberships. Um, pre mm -hmm. But March maybe if we did flyers twice, you know, the December break and then right. later on in the year, mm -hmm. even around spring break mm -hmm. time. What awesome would it be, how awesome would it be for Christmas time you go buy your family or friend a membership. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. If we have the pool rates out, which is what our goal is this year. Yep. Speaking of. So, Highlands is the high-end pool, right? Worthington right now is a pool like ours. Northland's a pool like ours. JC is pretty close to us, right? Like Drive-wise? No, size-wise. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And amenities, mm -hmm. right? I don't say amenities. Highland is the only one that has, it's got the, uh, the slides, it's got the it's got everything. Lazy River, you know, this is the high end. Right? JC high has end. a very nice big pool, or they have the two, their diving boards are just like ours. Okay. They have a kid's pool, ours is, I, I like ours, um, because it's newer. Mm -hmm. um, they have... They, they have more pool space, but a lot of times their other pool is not open. Their indoor pool is usually not open. Uh, okay. um, their concession stand, same thing. They have like a little seating area, but their concession is just very similar to ours. Um, at least the last time I was there, I'm assuming they haven't done too much to it. So I would say JC's is a very similar product. Where is the river park? Uh, I, I should have printed it and I didn't. That's why. Yeah, Highlands is, you know, if you work in Westerville, uh, here's the easy way to say this. If you work in Westerville or you are you live in Westerville, mm -hmm. if you want a pool that has all of the thrills and all of the crowd, you can't, you're never going to beat their prices. I mean, let's just be honest. But for me to go to Highlands is $160. I don't work in Westerville. There is absolutely no way for a family of four 300, I mean, non-resident is 365, which that's not insane, but their single is insane. That's a lot. So, let's see, where's our flyer? 365 is not horrible. For a family of four? For a family of four. Where ours is 280 or 300. Yeah. And that's if you don't have the early bird special. Yeah. The Highlands is definitely a lot. And what is ours, 100 for a single? Uh, 150. Oh, is that 150? Yeah. 130 for a resident. Oh, okay. I'm more, yeah, for a resident. But again, what is their, what is their daily? Um, non. What, or what's ours? What was ours this year? 12? We don't have the $12. There's not a resident. Ours is non-resident. Right. I mean, I think that's a great. Because this is what this does. I think if we adopted something like this, it would help behoove our residents and then make up for it and then some for our non-residents. Yeah, I mean, their, their residence is dirt cheap. It's their non-resident that... Right. But So we really, uh, we really need to...
be specific about our pool fees next year, I think. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we need to consider is, what does our pool fees look like the year after? Because this would be a transition year for us. Mm -hmm. So if, we're, if we get another pool for 2025, oh, yeah. membership will go up automatically. Mm -hmm. Does the price go up with it? Of course it does, right? right? There's no question about that. But we don't want, we don't want the... Pressure so loud in the market. Correct. Yeah, we need, a, we need to, and we need a good transition year. We can't go from, right. you know, we can't go from charging 150 for a non-resident to 210 the following year. There's got to be some transition Correct. in between there, right? Um, you know, our regular fees are pretty close to, well, and everyone does stuff different. So, like, in Hearst, you can do a couple. We don't do couples. We do twos. We don't do it by family, so they charge just by the family. Who else does? I feel like Worthington might do families. No, family of two, family of three, family of four. Then $40 for each additional. Um, hmm. See, a senior citizen only saves $45 in Worthington, which is crazy. All right. This is on this last leg, right? Yeah, this is. It is, but. But it we is still. This is this is the reason why I'm. It's still closest to what we have, yeah. probably. But that said, other than a senior, it's like not even a single member. Two hundred and forty-seven dollars. Oh yeah, no. I mean, this is it's insane. Just ridiculous. There, yeah, that's. But that goes to show you what happens if you price yourself out of the market. Exactly. You're going to end up closing. Yep. Okay, in her school, I'm pretty sure this is a small pool. It is. It's, it is. it's smaller. It's been it's a long time since It's I've run by volunteers and students and neighbors. Or not even. And um, it's more, I mean, in all honesty, it is, it's geared towards and her residents. Yes. Like, I don't want to say an HOA by any no. street or any stretch, but. I wouldn't say Worthington currently has much more than we do, except that they have multiple pools in the same faci mm -hmm. uh, facility. Um, yeah, we can't compete with this. Plus, they're the Cadillac of what they're offering. So we have to be... No. We use this as a guide, but... Quite... I'll, I'll be honest with you. Uh, you know, I'm sure that these are going to raise up. Oh, next year, absolutely. But... And they're not... These are from today? Yes, I printed them today. Yeah, no, they don't have next year stuff up yet. You know, one of the things that... Um, I was thinking, and I've had some discussions with people are, with our, um, do we offer a discount just for renewing your membership? We have not done that in the past. We've only done the early bird for our residents. But is it something that we could extend out to non-residents of the community for being loyal? Loyal, yeah, to our pool. And it might be the pushing... I'm going to say this too. I'm going to give you devil's advocate here. Yes, mm -hmm. because you, you know, if I know I'm going to get twenty dollars off, I'm going to go here versus go there. Mm -hmm. um, but number two, what does that look like? Is it going to be easy in a system? Is it, or are we going to spend two thousand dollars and everybody's going to click that box that I'm a past resident? We wouldn't be able to verify it if they're doing it. How would we put, so now I'm just saying if we do something like that. So logistics, we need to figure out the logistic piece of it. Correct. Yeah. Which, or it's, we do that, but that system just doesn't make sense yet. We stick mm -hmm. with what we have this year, budget that for next year with the new pool, with the new mm -hmm. everything, and we, we somehow figure out how to program it yeah. to do that. Well, so have, I would just hate to like start all, I would hate to go get a $2,000 system that doesn't do any of our discounts that we need it to do. It's true. And then we end up, you know, refunding back. I was just going to say one. That's a good question. If we did have software like that, any street name that was in Minerva Park, if you filled in where do you live, I live at 5261, right. you know. Um, I don't know how smart the system. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. And I, I, yeah, I mean, it might be that mm -hmm. the system is that smart. It might be that um, we insert what we want it to. Mm -hmm. Or there might be a discount code that we email everybody that had a membership and say, here's your discount code, mm -hmm. and everybody's going to get $20 off that had a previous membership. Right, right. So, I mean, that so might let, be how so, it would work. So, I, 
So yes, we have to figure out the logistics of it. And There's I think it's a great there, idea. But yes. ultimately, is I, there a downside to... I almost think it's more beneficial to reward the people that are loyal. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say it's more... I mean, okay, you could have a new resident that just moved in. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to say that they're not just as important, but it is nice to... Recurring. Yeah, I mean, reward the people that have supported you year after year after year. Again, mm -hmm. I understand the, the people that are new, or maybe they had infants and they couldn't, or maybe their kids were just brats like mine and they didn't want to go because they were too cool for the pool and now they're mm -hmm. at school and now mom and dad want to go. Right. So, I mean, there's different reasons as to why people may not have been a member before, mm -hmm. but it would give them, they're a member now, so next year they're going to get that discount. Well, and I think the other thing is, if we know that we're going to have a new pool for the 25 season, it's incentive to get people to sign up Correct. next year mm -hmm. so that they can get a discount. Yeah. Oh, I, I love the idea of people being able to get a discount for um, a recurring membership. And, I mean, maybe we do, and this be the year that maybe we do a residential or a recurring, and we really don't do much for, and I hate to say that, but we really don't do that much for the non-residents unless we do some big promotion because I don't think people are, you're not getting that big, huge crowd of mm -hmm. people that are buying memberships. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I would love to figure out a way to get more residents involved in coming to the pool. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, I don't want to say we're missing the boat or this or that. People do different things than mm -hmm. just because not everybody has my desire for the pool. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's, there's, I'm surprised that we didn't have more family memberships with as many children as right. we have in the village. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were a lot, don't right. get me wrong, but I feel like well, there's got to be something that we're <clears throat> missing. I think, I think one of the things that we could be missing is paying that, paying it all up front, right? Mm -hmm. So, yes, I, I mean, I think if we can do yeah, payments, that's, that's yeah. A, yeah, you know, we totally can start as early as January, mm -hmm. and Hopefully we can you can do six months. No, it has to be paid before the pool opens. It has. But still, well, you've I got mean, January, like, February, February March, April. Yeah, that's five, five months, months of payments. So imagine, imagine spreading whatever. Just even three hundred, three hundred divided by six is fifty dollars a month. Yeah. So yeah, if and that's the our, biggest. Not even that much. I'm just right. saying. Yeah. I think if we figure out the big, if that's the biggest obstacle is payment, like you said, that's the most brilliant idea. I mean, now you're brilliant bringing it everyone up. Everyone is it budget up. conscious right, right now, and if you can build it into your budget, uh -huh. and saying, hey, you know what? For the first five months of the year, I'm paying, uh -huh. you know, fifty, sixty bucks a month to get my membership, whatever it would be, right? And then you have the clause. I, I think two things that, again, logistically, you either do. And this is going to sound horrible, so I know I'm on public record for saying this. You either have to do it, though, that once you make that first initial payment, it's non-refundable because then you start right. with, I saw, now, maybe, maybe with the exception of if they prove that their house is for sale and they're actually moving, right. yeah. um, or, right. you know, they got relocated. I mean, there's still, there's still circumstances that I'm sure. not going to keep someone's money. Right. But, you know, if they sign up for it, because, again, we don't want this to become a financial nightmare right. for the village. Right. So it right. would be non-refundable, you know, unless there's, you know, it's kind of like your gym membership. You got to mm -hmm. be moving across the country in order to cancel right. it. Right. Um, so it's no different. You know, we would have something and we would need Jesse to do, to make sure that we're dotting our I's and crossing our T's. But, mm -hmm. and same thing, it must be paid for before your first entry into the pool. I got it. So, Every year, inflation gets more and more. We'll say $5 or $10 a year. I'm just throwing up an imaginary number because I don't know how to mm -hmm. monetary mm -hmm. part of these numbers go. So if we're taking into consideration that, for example, I'm just throwing out, a, say if you, every year you had to go up $10 because of inflation. Maybe that person could only go up $5 by being loyal or something like that as opposed to, you know. And if you pay for your membership all up front and you're a Monroe Park resident, all these things, would that behoove you to get a slight discount to pay up front as opposed to, say, a payment plan? Because I feel that the payment plan, you kind of have a little interest charge on, you know? Well, I mean, we, to, we'd have fees that, on it, yeah, but... Um, um, the, I'm going to say something else, and this is, again, you guys wrong? don't ever take what I say wrong. 
depending on what happens next year, mm -hmm. assuming Jason is still sitting here doing this particular committee, the things that we do, we either have to make sure that these are easily maintainable mm -hmm. or that the next group doesn't come in and say all of the work that we did. So if we start promising people we're not going to do more than X or whatever, right. you might not be sitting here, I might not be sitting here, and he might not be sitting here. And now these people are like, I'm not going back to that pool because they told me they were going to do this, this, this. I think it's a great idea. Again, incentivizing the people for... Mm -hmm. coming back and being loyal and I'm in 100% agreeance but we have to make sure that we do it well, in a way that we can fulfill what we're saying we're doing yeah once right. it's voted on I mean right once we're, yeah we're stuck with it unless right. they vote to change it correct but, um, and I don't know that they you know we, that the, and I'm not I, I am not implying that there's going to be some big turnover that people are going to be difficult about it but mm -hmm. if it became too much um too many different obstacles you know maybe they decide that they don't want to offer this discount or that discount or this or that. So I'm not in, I'm just, I like being devil's advocate here because well, these are some of the things that can, could bite you in the butt. Yeah. yeah we will know. also know some of these things before mm -hmm. we go into next yes. year. So we'll know who the two new council people are. Right. We'll know the mayor. Mm -hmm. I think you're right so. though. Simple and sweet that way. So we have time to change things. Yeah. If we need to, but, um, Okay, okay so, so go back to pricing. Pull yes. up ours, and let's see what we can adjust. Okay, let's start with the easy one. Day pass. Do you want to do a resident and a non-resident? Do you want to leave it alone to where it's just a day pass? And again, do are we trying to do things to make it easy for office staff? Are we trying to make money? Are we trying to incentivize our resident? What are we trying to accomplish? We don't have a daily pass for that. I want to say yes. I want to say something like, or maybe. And I mean, and are we trying to, and uh, this is, I never want to feel like we're trying to keep people out of the pool no. and out pricing people. Mm -mm. And to me, putting it for $20 a day, gee, many freaking Christmas yeah. are they out. Maybe something like. I couldn't afford to take my family to Highlands without a day pass or without. A maybe like a dollar or two. Well, I mean, I, some, of that, some of that's the point, right? Maybe 10 like, to 15. Like you, you want them to get a member, but I heard that sometimes they're so full that they don't even. Right. If you're not a if you're not a resident, they'll turn you away. Yeah. At twenty dollars a pop. Mm -hmm. I mean, just think about that. A family of four, eighty dollars to walk into the pool for a couple hours. Right. Yeah, that's like I I literally could not afford to go to Highlands Pool. I mean, I, I guess when mm -hmm. you start thinking, I mean, twelve times four is much more, is much easier to swallow than twenty. But then, so what's that a percentage of 80, 160, 320? You'd have to go four, four and a half times in order to, yeah. Which, or, I mean. I'm just throwing out a sample here. Like maybe a resident, as of right now, is $12 and non-resident would be 15 or 14 or $2 more. Something... I don't know. We've never done a difference. I think yeah. I think the question then becomes Is that too complicated or? how do you prove it at the door? You got a point. All right, too messy. I mean, honestly, I mean, they ask all they do is ask for your address when you go they used to. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to show an ID. Kids didn't have to show an ID when you went to Highlands. They would just ask you for your street name. Um, and they just took your word for it when cuz I never lied. I I said I didn't live in the village or in the village Jimmy and Christmas. When I went to Highlands, I paid the normal, you know, non-resident whatever price. But I'm sure people probably use other people's addresses or whatever. Okay. So let's look. So compared to Highlands, adult. Now they do have a youth rate, which is interesting. Ninety dollars for an adult, eighty dollars for youth. It doesn't say what age of youth is, but I'm going to guess eighteen and under. Yeah. I would guess. And fifty-five dollars for senior if you're a resident, which we're a hundred, right? Yeah. Um, oops. Yeah, 100. Um, but then what's their non resident? What is 160 their for non resident? What's our non resident? Is uh, 150. Okay. So we're even cheaper there. Um, 255 for non resident family of two, or 145. So we're $50 more. And 255. 
Yeah, 180 and 320 for three. See, ours jump a lot. They do, yeah. More than theirs do. 160 to 255 is a $95 jump for non-resident. And a resident is only a $55 jump. Boy, wow. Whereas we're doing, we're jumping up $65. See, they don't have evening weekend. And people liked, I heard people like those. Did you, how did you think we did on the weekend evening I mean, about evening the ones? same as last year. Okay. It's same with premium, right? You have, we had, you know, eight, ten of each. So, okay. you know, it works for some people. And those that it worked for, they get it. Mm-hmm. Family guest pass is $85 and we charge $70. This is where it gets, it, this is where this language becomes fuzzy. Yes. Because each additional meant originally the caregiver or the babysitter. Mm -hmm. It wasn't for each person past that. Because we only do $20 difference between eight and nine. We're not jumping up 70 more dollars if you're at a 10 person, right? So we need to make sure that this is clear yeah. next year. Four forty-five for seven. Yeah. See. Versus two fifty-five. I mean, we could come down on our resident pricing. But do we jump up again on the non-resident a little bit? Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's do this. Let's leave that one alone. Like that one. Because the other thing is, if we so ours is this, a lot lower. Ended the. Okay, let's do this. Read me the non-resident mm -hmm. family of three. Two seventy-five. Three hundred. Three twenty. Three forty. It goes up by twenty each time. Next. Okay, let's go to there. Single pass. Mm -hmm. Okay, we only did seven on here. Okay, so I'm going to stop here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not doing these ones. So let's focus on these ones right now. And if we for, leave this alone. And then we're $20 cheaper on our resident. Yeah. Everything is $20 okay. less. Okay. So if we did... I don't have a rhyme or reason to this yet. We might have to actually like do math on here, but what's weird is I was thinking the same numbers of it. <laughs> mm. I don't know how I managed that, but I had to get myself to an even number. Okay, this is where we are. This is what we're going to go to. Mm -hmm. We are still less than that, still less than that. And maybe we'll tweak it again. Mm -hmm. 400, and then we go 425, up 25. Okay. Now, let's leave ours at where we're at. 130. So we're going to leave it at the 130. Mm -hmm. We still have the senior yep, one, at what? 195. No. Oh, senior. senior is 100. We're going to leave that. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I'm one. not worried about this. Okay, we're, we're, we're just not them. It is what it is. Where right. are we right now? 195. 255, 280, 300, and it's 20 each time, 320, 340. Okay. I mean, and quite honestly, with, with, our, with our vision of the 2025 pool, we should be competing with Highlands at that point. I agree. That's why this, is, this might not be the best option. This is weird to do, but, or maybe we just leave them. These go up. These yeah, either. I'm okay with coming down on this too. That's three what, and four. 
That's what I did. I, yeah. I didn't go crazy because we still have the early bird, mm -hmm. the repeating, the however we want to do it. Mm -hmm. But let's get that a little closer to that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know we're still far, but there's not a lot you can do. And then we start breaking. <coughs> and maybe we just leave those alone. Leave, leave, leave. Because we don't have that many of those. 275 for a family of four. They get the early bird. So if you do the early bird, you're down to... I mean, if we did $25 off, they would be down to two fifty. Yeah. You're not that far off, but I think you need to go up there, down there. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. I think you need to be either straight across the board or you do 12 resident, 15 non-resident. Okay. And I yeah. just don't know. And so I think... That's a good start. I, like I think residents, it would be nice... Um, logistically, it is left up to the front desk people to verify mm -hmm. however we decide to do it. Maybe it's just they say their address. Um, you believe them? You believe them? I mean, right. we're not going to argue with them. Well, if we go digital for the whole thing, they're they buying do. it online. Right. And if they lie, they lie. I mean, so, it's, I'm, I'm not in, you know, I personally I know. wouldn't, but people do. There's I mean, nothing. It's $3. It's $3. It's $3. It's, $3. Exactly. Yeah. You know, you hope that people do the mm -hmm. right thing. Or you just do it 15 straight across the board. Um, I always say it this way. I don't not, I, I'm not rich. Everybody knows what I make. So um, $3 is not going to make me not go to a movie. Right. $6 is not going to make reason I not go to a movie. Mm -hmm. So if you are planning on going 12 versus 15 is not going to make or break me from going. Right. Um, obviously chlorine and all of that stuff is more expensive. We're buying mm -hmm. chairs. We're trying to mm -hmm. get ourselves to a new pool. Yep. Um, I know some people would prefer us to drop it down to $10. Um, I, honestly, but we can't. I don't know that I heard anyone. Complain no, about I'm it, saying, so. no, I'm saying some people would love yep. residents so might then, like it being cheaper. What about holidays? Do we um, still do have 20. a holiday? I don't know. Or leave it at 15. I don't. Here's the other part to that. If you if they're bringing cash or whatever, because I would still always rather take cash, and I know we're trying to get away from that, but there's no pro, there's no fees. Mm -hmm. um, I think you're more likely for a kid to bring $15 or whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, I don't know that I would do $17 just because that's odd, but is it worth it? Now we're getting to like Highlands, you know, this is good. So then, what about the ten pack? I know we need do to we talk do about a. That. So it's got to be at least a hundred. Yeah, we know that. Yes, I would do it just do a flat hundred. A, do we have a member non-member? Okay. And I'm just throwing that out there. Okay, why don't we do this? Mm -hmm. Resident only, hundred dollars. Period. For the ten pack, that's it. That's it. Resident yep. only. Yeah. Yeah. That's one benefit, and a lot of our residents use them. I did. Yeah, I wish I knew who bought them. We don't have any data on who bought the 10 packs, but oh, I put $10 in it to put 100. I like giving them out. I think um, I would like to talk this all these over with John because that's how we missed that membership pack, the 10 pack of being 80. He's like, well, what's, everyone's gonna buy that. Yeah. So. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. We'll have like a little. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'll, what I'll do is I'll get all these with him, uh, with him and just ask him about it and see what his thoughts are. And tweak it as need be. Mm -hmm. Okay. As far as premium and all that, I think we just, in the past, we've used these numbers as our base for those others, for the Agreed. weekend and evening and the other. And as long as, when we get the basic set, then we can adjust the rest from there. We can say, you know, the nights and weekends, so much off per, if we get the base ones done, we can figure out the rest pretty okay. easy. So I want to run and all And those these. are just mom. I mean, you guys yeah, run no. the numbers and tweak them from there. But yeah. I mean, I think... I want to bring this by John and just get mm -hmm. his input on it. The so. other thing, the only thing that I would say, because again, devil's advocate here. Mm -hmm. Does the 10 pack, just doing resident only, mess us up on birthday parties and things like that to where people aren't going to do them because it's still cheaper to do 10 packs and then they just come in and 
they don't want the extras or is it okay if residents want to do that because most residents are already members mm -hmm. so therefore people are already coming in I like the 10 packs I buy them um, a lot of time Tanner never travels alone so there's usually six of them so sometimes mm -hmm. eight so mm -hmm. for me it's it I'm just gonna say it's cheaper for me to go buy a 10 pack let the kids use them until they're gone and then I keep doing that because it is very expensive when you start talking about 12 and 15 dollars right um, Tanner's on mine, but none of his friends are. Right. So those are nice because, again, they're never going to come more than once or twice in a the summer. They, they came twice. Mm -hmm. So they, and I'll, right. I'll say this, I bought a 10-pack, and I think they ended up using four right. on the second one. The rest, and it's so, the village made the money. I know. So honestly, it would have been cheaper. I know. And I, I have done it every single year. Mm -hmm. I literally lost out on it because mm -hmm. I was, the right. weather was horrible, and right. I just missed out the last two weeks. Um, so it was probably cheaper for me just to buy the 15. So I don't think we're losing money on those. Um, but I think, again, that's just one of those perks that mm -hmm. is nice for residents to be able to, if mm -hmm. they decide they want to do it. I think the other thing to remember is if we're going off last year's prices, they're going to raise all these for next year. And so that's they'll actually where, be closer. Yeah. And well, yeah. and maybe you want to go up another five or $10 on those. Like once you talk to John, I think... And I'm just going to say this. I think $20 is too expensive, period. So I'm hoping that we don't go that high. I think 15 needs to be the max that we would go. And whether or not, I think, again, I think it would be, you're putting the pool staff once again. But JC, I mean, mm -hmm. or Highlands does it. They ask mm -hmm. every single, yep. you know, person that comes in, um, you know, what their address is. So I know it's doable. Right. It's just a matter of do we want to do that and... You know, how, what, how do we want to do it? And like right. you said, if it's all done online, then we don't have to worry about it. Exactly. Yep. Yep. The, the goal is to get as many people to sign up before the pool opens. Absolutely. And fewer to sign up afterwards. Uh -huh. I agree. Um, especially if we're not changing software. Oh, yeah. Because that was a nightmare. Yeah. Um, okay, so let me run these by John, and I'll talk to him about that. Um, Premium. I, again, I think we just kind of... Stick we with them. We use a... Um, percentage or whatever mm -hmm. off of our regular prices yeah. for all. I would for try to keep them. resident as close to where we were. And then we only did do... resident for premium. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Then yeah. I mean, so. quick question mm -hmm. on the memberships that people are paying monthly to the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. Um, what's the down payment on that? I forgot. I think they can just do just split it. Yeah. They can do in five equal payments, three equal. Maybe we give them two options. And, and again, it depends on what software we have. Well, we At the end of the day, they probably just have to have it paid for before mm -hmm. it's done. So I don't know that there's going to be, if there's a way to do it, maybe we just split it into five equal payments or three equal payments. Because I was just thinking like, you know how like everyone has like these $200 down or $199 down? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like oh, if you could, like, yeah. it, 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 here's why I'm doing this. Boom, January. Just for $99, secure your position right now right. in the pool. Boom. And then that way, you're in the door. You're right. committed. Like, mm -hmm. um, and that's yeah. Especially for the I mean, families. Yeah. You pay $50 now, split the rest over the next four uh -huh. months. That's we'll have to, it's Yeah. I mean, it, it's going to depend on the software. Right. In my opinion, it's, it's solely going to depend on what absolutely. it's, yep. it's going to allow us to do. And the reason I'm asking this, too, is... Stay on these billboards or whatever, mm -hmm. like save or these little temporary signs of if we, if we got our you know everything ducks in a row and it's come January, North Park pool don't know if you know about it or not whatever ninety nine dollars search your you know mm -hmm. that way we're, we're getting people to mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. kind of get yeah. get our you know mark or whatever it yeah. is. Um, <clears throat> the um, the pool rental will be part of the fee schedule, right? Is that on the fee schedule? It's not part of our, huh? I hope not. Because we can't change it much. Right. I don't know that we need to change it, but yes. I'm just want to. I'm trying to remember where we vote on that. Um, you know, I think we we can do a standard. We'll double check. We can do standard markup or something, increase it. We actually did pretty well with the after yes. hour rental. Mm -hmm. I think partially because we promoted it. Yeah. Um, and I think next year we'll see even more of them, to uh -huh. be honest with you. I don't think we sold a single birthday party. So I think that's something to look at. You know, maybe the price point was just too much. Maybe it needs to be closer to that 10-pack membership right. um, fee mm -hmm. and include the ice cream and the water or something. I don't know. I think it would have also helped if we had 
a separate area. Yes, and like the I picnic agree. tables almost should have had signs that say reserve. Rip me, oh, yeah. You know, scan this QR code to reserve me for your next birthday party right. or something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, speaking of birthdays, what do you guys normally charge for a birthday party and how many people are included in this package? So what the package was for 10 children, okay. two adults. It was admission for two hours. You got five, 10 bottles of water and 10 of those ice cream cups, either chocolate or vanilla. And how much was that? It was 150 bucks. So part of it we killed with that $80 10 pack. Yeah. It was actually cheaper just to buy everything a la carte. So if you go to Chuck E. Cheese and you bring, and I'm, we just did this like the year before, mm -hmm. I think it was 300 I'm, it's insane, it was like $300 for five, you got these tokens and stuff like oh, that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like say, if we did do a 10 pack, we could like, you get like a little to-go bags because mm -hmm. so, we got candy and stuff like that. We could make a little to-go bag package. Mm -hmm. um, pizza. Mm -hmm. I mean. I think once we get, we get a stuff. real concession stand, yeah. we could yeah. really oh, kind yeah. of go out on some stuff. Just oh, yeah. things of. Just um, being able to do, yeah, just being able to do pizzas and stuff yeah. would be awesome. Mm -hmm. That's all right. Yeah, there's, there's, so, there's so much potential that you can do once we, once we get into being able to do some of that to stuff. To have a real food license instead mm -hmm. of this. Um, yeah, number two um, food license. Do we want to talk, and I don't know if you want to at least bring it up. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we only had one issue with one pool party. Yes. So getting the rules set aside, I don't think that's going to be an issue. I, in my opinion, it needs to be extremely clear. I mean, in my opinion, I think we need to set if there are X amount of people, no matter, mm -hmm. and maybe we don't make resident or, um, you know, a resident could with written request to the mayor and the pool manager, you know, we could exclude a police officer presence, but I think if it has over 30, 40, or 50, however many we decide, mm -hmm. it is <coughs> mandatory, yeah. period. Would, yeah, and, and, and add to that, if the moment you're past 30, your credit card automatically gets swiped for right. yeah. that police right. officer. You probably need to take the deposit. If anyone breaks yeah. any of these rules that we have, alcohol, you're, and this, yeah. that, yeah. so So forth. I think we can easily tweak that. I think just as long as you guys are kind of okay with the way that yeah. we end up wording it and having... Jesse's final I was approval. Say, we should run it by Jesse and get. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We already started to, um, but you know, I think one of the issues is is once you start getting into the larger crowds, you do have the people that are bringing in the drugs and the alcohol. It mm -hmm. it happens. I'm not saying it just because it happens somewhere else. We're going to allow it here, but we're not going to. And we need the police presence to nip it yeah. in the butt. You know, when you have these larger parties. We almost need. Uh, we might. Let's think about maybe putting some check boxes on there where, mm -hmm. you know, alcohol will be present. We'll have a DJ and right. kind of, correct. you know. Correct. Also something in the clause that said if any one of these rules are under, broken. If you're under 21 and you have alcohol, you're right. going to yeah, be immediately are, removed. You can yeah. get immediately yeah. removed. And, and at this mm -hmm. point, there is no refund whatsoever. Correct. The party is right. over. We don't, right. we have a zero tolerance policy. So correct. Just to, to help whenever party. The one thing that we didn't do that should be in the paperwork and the front desk needs to enforce it is if they've signed up for a group of 50 mm -hmm. once we hit 50 we don't let anyone else in the door Correct. yeah you know if someone leaves someone else can come in but right. a group of 50 is a group of 50 that's the max right there Correct. can't be and uh, yeah especially which if is you what happened this last yeah, time right? especially yeah. well i mean partially yes so um and uh, you know just you can only vet people so much when they don't tell the truth. Mm -hmm. So there's absolutely zero to blame whatsoever on that. But we didn't really have enough. We did. I mean, we, we stopped it. We kicked them out because they were under 21. But um, it would be nice if the paperwork did say, you know, the zero policy, you yeah. know, zero tolerance. The hard part that I have is, you know, it, the very next week, I don't know how many people were there because I absolutely was not there. It was a resident. It was a kid's birthday and there was no issues, no problem. And they didn't need police presence if they would have had 50, mm -hmm. um, 10 year olds. Right. I mean, yeah, we need more right. lifeguards or we would need more lifeguards, but a party like that doesn't necessarily, but I don't want to say I trust residents more, but I think a resident might have more, 
um, reason to be, you know, yeah. honest with us. Right. So I right. feel like if it's a resident that with right. written, you know, with written mm -hmm. something to the mayor and to John, just so we have the backup for that, that we could exclude in the event that there is no alcohol, no this, Correct. no that with over <clears throat> yep. X amount of people or something. Um, but it is very important that we have the right amount of people there as well for lifeguards. So, I mean, the number is very important for not just police presence, but the amount of lifeguards that we need. Mm -hmm. So, right. um, so I think with that, I will make sure that it's not going to happen this week, but we will start taking a really good hard look at that. We're not going to start rentals for the pool until after the first of the year, but it would right. be nice in the next and couple. And it doesn't go through any council no. meetings or anything. So, so we'll make sure that we dot our eyes and have yeah. a couple people look at it. And again, this is how you learn what's not in there mm -hmm. um, by these events. So, and it's only happened once, right? In four years that I've been here, so that's great odds. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think if we can tweak the birthday party thing, I think, so think about it. You know, maybe because yeah. we have time yeah. to kind of yeah. Because I mean, those are not we need in to the, put it in with the, mm -hmm. now it is with the fee just is, the amount but, yeah. But what we end up including right. is not necessarily. So once we set the number. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, we and we have a couple weeks that we can still tweak that number too. Right. We'll right. have October's meeting for sure. Right. So yeah, I think let's let's mull that over a little and think of what you know. What's a good incentive? What do you think can what can we include? You know, logistically. That would get people to do them. Yeah. yeah. And then I think, I think the it's tables, the area. I think the table. I think help. it's the table in the yeah. area mm -hmm. and having that your own personal space. Right. Yeah. Is big. Um. Okay. So now, here's kind of the the biggest thing. What, I thought how, we were already at the biggest how, thing. Well, this was the biggest as okay. far as <laughs> like, wait a the oh. current pool situation. Okay. How do we, what, are, what is the next steps for the new pool? Like, <laughs> I wish I had an answer. Um, right now. <laughs> I feel like we got to get serious about that because we've talked feel, about, yes. we've talked about how we're going to fund it and what those options are. Maybe at and this is Tiffany. Okay. Going to 2025, what's the more specific question? How do we get the money? We have to raise, the, we have to have the funds available next year in order to start construction the day after Labor Day. Hmm. I think you're... And we're talking several million. We know that the village can get, I think it was what, three and a half? Three and a half? Well, I mean, we're working on those. You know, we need to see what grants are available. We've started putting, you know, we'll have 300,000 roughly put aside. Um, I think the first thing is, and you guys are probably already talking about it, is figuring out what options we have for financing. Mm -hmm. what That's are, what we need to know. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, we need assistance with legally how much money can we borrow, mm -hmm. what types of grants could potentially be available, um, and if the number is X, what does that look like? Right. Because if we can't, uh, common sense is, it's just like everything. I mean, right. if... I want a million dollar house, but if you give yeah. me 250,000, this is how much I can go spend on. Right. So I think we need a realistic, like, okay, this is how much money we, if we were to put a bond mm -hmm. on the ballot, this is how much we could do. Right. If we were to do this, this is how much we could do. Um, I mean, that's, I mean, I feel like we can talk about a new, pool that's x amount of dollars until we're purple i think we need exactly. to find out and i hate putting our um uh, mksk through right doing all these revisions and whatnot if we are we need to we need if to legally the max is even putting it on the right. bond is 3.8 million right. we need to know that i mean if if there is never going to be a way that we're going to be able to do this more than x six million or whatever it is that's what we need to know so step one for 2025 is figuring out how much financing it's we have. Got to, no, it's got to be before 2025, but it needs to be after the elections. We, if, I don't know what it takes to put something on the ballot. I don't know how early in advance we need to. 
Right now, something like that can, you can start getting signatures and things like that pretty much now, but it doesn't go on the ballot until then. There is, I mean, again, I don't, spring election, is there, is an op, is there, right. I, I don't know if there's right. anybody else going to be on there because we don't want to take on the brunt of that. Right. Um, I'm never going to say that, you know, you don't want to take something like this to the voters because that might be the only way. Yep. Um, and then it's more of a campaign of <coughs> selling it to residents. This was, um, I want to show you two more things and then we can wrap up. So this came from Tim and his team because we said, hey, can you help us imagine what the inside of the mm -hmm. community, uh, the event space slash restrooms and stuff looks like? So this is kind of a rough thing that they came up with. Um, you know, I think we've already said the wish list of the committee is that this building gets taken all the way out and extended over so that this space is bigger. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the other thing that I don't like here is that this does not have any connection outside of this patio to the pool area because mm. the pools would sit over okay. here, right? Mm -hmm. So um, it does have a men's room, a woman's room. I don't know what A stands for. Accessible, maybe. Maybe. The concession stand with a window that opens up into the community room and a window that opens out into the okay. public. This is the patio space. Um, Here's the two locker rooms. Um, it must be a, a camp. There's no showers in there, though. I just noticed that. Not that, that. not that that's a deal breaker, but with swim teams, I think some of them might like that. And then you have a lifeguard station and then the office, which are all kind of connected. Um, so this is just kind of their, Rough, hey, yeah. you know, with the what we drew in that space, this is kind of what you guys can have. You can see some lockers. There's a water fountain. Um, not the worst thing in the world. There's definitely some things I'd tweak on here yeah. for sure, um, but I'm not I'm not upset about this first draft yeah, no. of it all. So um, the other thing is I want you to see. Let's see if I can put it still up here. Yeah, let's go back here. Um, you know, Worthington Pools is looking to redo theirs. How are they financing theirs? Do you know? They are talking about putting a levy. Um, they're deciding if the levy is going to be for oh, that's right. the resi Worthington residents or Worthington school district residents. Because that's a much bigger mm -hmm. um, group. So this is one of the renderings for it. Um, the low end of theirs is $10 million. The high end is 15 And then you can see... Let me find the... Uh, I think it's this one. There's a 70 years. Did I say? Oh, presentation. Is this it? Theirs is about what? Age? Mm -hmm. I think it's about the same. Oh, that's not it either. Come on, I had it up earlier. Design options. This is it. Okay, option one. I think I'm in the middle of this. Uh, okay, option one is 10.3, option two is 12.8. So this one, they're basically just renovating what they already have. Uh, this one here, they get new pool house and mechanical plus renovation and replacement of current pools. This is everything's brand new, 15.4. So. Oh, jeez. Yeah, well, they have a lot. Oh, no, I'm saying, jeez. Um, that's pricing. No, I saw the pictures. Oh, yeah, no, it's gorgeous. Uh -huh. um, okay, so this is, I think, option one, renovating. Um, renovated pool house floor plan, not to scale. So you can see their their bathrooms are pretty large. Oh, yeah. I don't understand some of this space, to be honest with you. They have family restrooms on the outside, women's restroom, men's restroom. They have showers, they have locker rooms. Then I don't know what this space is, and then this is a lifeguard first aid, and then their concession stand is under this large patio type structure. See, that's um, the way it is at JC. Okay. Concession stands over here, and then there's like a hole. And then this is a brand new building, I believe. Oh, yeah, this is a new pool house. So this is um, filters and all the chemical yeah. rooms and all that type of stuff. 
Um, I think that's the thing that people don't understand, that when we build a new pool and we have the new pumps mm -hmm. and everything, the chemicals have to be stored in a certain way. OSHA is going to require that they have certain <laughs> storage because some of, this, some of these are acid. Mm -hmm. um, when I toured the Athens pool, they're like, yeah, you have to get in a whole hazmat suit to even go into this room. Mm -hmm to handle the chemicals that are in that room, so. Oh. No, it, yeah, it's a totally different world when um, you start doing that's this. That's the exterior look of the building. So that's the concession stand, and then that's the main building. And then this is option two. So this is a little more um, renovated. So this is, what, this is what the space looks like, right? Oh, my Lord. So... This is a new activity pool. I believe it's a zero entry pool. It's got slides that are refurbished. The central pool that's been renovated. It's got the diving board. It's got, excuse me, it's got a small slide there. And then there's an adult pool. I do like this concept on the adult pool. Mm -hmm. And I like these steps going down into mm -hmm. it. So I think that's something that we can definitely do. I don't know what the surge tank is, to be honest with you. I don't know if that's a structure or what. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the pavilion over there. And then they already have a splash pad. So these are some of the things that they can they can do. Uh, lounging area. I think that's what these umbrellas are supposed mm -hmm. to represent, where there's seats and benches, that is so cool. climbing walls, water polo area that can be put in, and then the diving boards. And again, I think some of this is already there. If you could just check all those boxes. I know. This is option two. This is all new buildings. So this is a new front entrance, there's admissions office, there's manager's office. Uh, this is a guard room with storage, restrooms for them, first aid, family restrooms, multi-purpose space, which I really like with its own restroom, offices, storage, office, um, concession area. With a pantry, which I think was missing mm -hmm. from ours. And then this is a new men's locker room, women's locker room. Um, which is an amazing facility right there. That's the pump house attached to it. Maintenance workshop, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. And then that's what it looks like from the outside, which is gorgeous building. Mm. Looks like it's got the metal roof, which would match Except some of the other Except that's probably stuff. their maintenance just for the pool. <laughs> Do you really this is Worthington, yeah. It's only 700 square feet, so if you think about yeah, it, that's, that's oh, probably yeah, the that's rooms, that that's probably, yeah, that's that is probably the person that is there geez, cleaning up the pool yeah. and clean, doing the trash cans, that's and there's, they probably have a person that's literally loser full-time. Right. There's <laughs> option three. This is the $15 million pool. Oh, my God. This is the central pool being, getting renovated, so that doesn't change. New pool house, restrooms, mechanical building. I don't even know what's all in here, but that's a ton of stuff. Cool in this stuff. activity pool, which is a new pool. Um, and they have a splash pad. Wow. So this shows that. I still want to know what that surge tank is. I think it's a pump that pumps water. So a play nook. There's a water table. I don't know where that water table is on this. There's a smaller slide. Oh, I want the ninja cross. Um, yep, there's a little ninja thing. I think <gasps> there's an opposite. Look at that. Yep. Damn. That's like Zimbezi Bay. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> So, Ninja Cross. <laughs> and we don't have anything like this in ours at all. Mm -hmm. wow. uh, but that's option three. And then. What are they leaning towards? Have you I heard? I actually, actually don't have any idea. And then, well, that said option three, but what is this? Oh, no, that was option two. This is option three. Yeah, option three was all brand new. Okay, so this is a new adult pool. Look at this. That's got to be an Olympic size. Oh, yeah. Laps and everything, yeah. Pool right there. Aqua zip, ninja crossing, climbing wall, diving boards. Oh, so it's deeper. Look at the right slides there. over there. Yep. Now these are more expensive to operate because they don't go into yeah. a pool. That means you have to have a guard. You have to someone oh. have to have someone at the top and someone at the bottom. That's interesting. And then this whole little activity area. And then that pool. I really like this pool. I love that pool. So, I mean, we don't need that big. We could do that big. Mm -hmm. You know, take three lanes out, but I really like that. That's awesome, though, if you actually, if people could do actual lap swimming. And I think that's the thing is, you know, mm -hmm. moving forward, having a pool. How many people have asked that, you know, swim lessons and being able to swim laps and oh, doing, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, just for basic exercise and things like that. Yeah. I mean, it would be amazing to have. I bet a teacher that she's taught swimming, she would love to have an, an extra job. And I'm like thinking, 
How many kids in this neighborhood that could sign up for that? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and I, this is a huge difference now compared to what this neighborhood used to be. This is what a surge tank is. It it's one of those dump things that storage dumps the water. Space, yeah. storage, like as people get in the pool, yeah. it takes it so it doesn't... Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. So, I mean, here's the thing. This is what we're going to be competing with. Mm-hmm. And if the lo- if the pool's around us... Now, granted, Worthington is, Worthington is way over here, right? We're right here. No, Worthington's over here. Yeah. But still, now you have Highlands, now you have Worthington. Let's just get rid of Northland. No one goes You know, here's the thing. We build this, we we pull in all this area. Oh, we yeah. really do. Yeah. And I don't even know how much of this would be Westerville. This is Blendon Township, but... It is. I don't know if they get any Westerville rates through that. Probably not, huh? No. So we really could pull in even all of this. This is our market right here. So what we build will compete with these. Oh, and, yeah. we're, and we're really the perfect distance away to do it. Mm-hmm. Northland would be our comp. Northland is our competition now, but knowing that they're not going to go anywhere, we're, yeah. we could put them under. Worthington is doing this to their pool uh-huh. way out here. Uh-huh. That's the one at Thomas Worthington High School. Mm-hmm. That's the pool. If we build it, they will come. That's absolutely true, too. Especially something like that. I mean, we could probably. Like I don't know what our. I, I'd hate to guess what our memberships could be, but you know, just to let you know, we are pulling this all out here. We pull. Oh, I know. Yeah, they're I'm sure we pull. Because most of we people do. have told yeah. me that up and they don't want to go to any of these places. I know. So. I know we do, but this is kind of our main demographic. Yeah, we have people that come from Westerville and yeah. things like that. It, day passes and you know their friends are coming so then they're coming to our pool and yeah. I mean I know several people that live in Westerville that come to ours people I went to high school with I'm trying to figure out how do we lock these people down for your right. memberships well, well I like the I idea the re- that the renewing discount helps with that mm-hmm. I think so too you know you you pay it the first year huh? and then you get you get that renewal discount and maybe, maybe over the years, maybe our renewal discount goes up with our membership going up, membership rates going up. As you know, maybe it's twenty five dollars this coming year, but maybe next year, yeah. you know, depending on the year after, if we have a new pool, maybe they get forty dollars off because our memberships have gone up that much. And a beautiful pool. Yeah. You know, no, I don't think we do that every year, but. Spinning. Look, we ten ten and a half. We did ten five, right? Let's just say ten five this pool season, or a hundred. Oh, no, wait. What did I say? Ten thousand five hundred or a hundred thousand five. What did I say? Anyway, ten five. I thought we did a hundred, a hundred that, a hundred and ten thousand. Mm-hmm. So now we have we have a concession stand that can really sell food. Right. We have... I door dash every day because they don't have, like, actual food. Yeah. We have... I do. Um, we have um, the only one. a swimming lap pool that we can have competitions out on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, which is historically slow nights for the pool, <coughs> which, rumor has it, a concession stand can pull in several thousands of dollars at one of those events from families that are there for three hours watching their kids swim. Then we have the additional memberships. We have an event space where people can use that. And, you, and you're already saying that the new building is already, the new municipal building is already. We've already had it. multiple requests for people to rent that building. Yeah. So imagine to rent now our if we had. Community room. Now if we have two spaces and one that has 81 parking spaces compared to the 40 or so, right. maybe. That are at the municipal building, twice but as much parking. If we had, and the second part to that is if we had an indoor space like that, mm-hmm. we would be able to use it more than just the three, four months out of the year. Right. So the I event agree. space we would be able to use even for our holiday parties mm-hmm. or Halloween parties yep. or, yep. you know, all of those kind of things. Yep. And, and you then, know, you could do Buckeye games in there. Right. There, we can, if we really think about the space and how we can use it, mm-hmm. it can be more of a eight, 12 season Mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. So think about after pool season closes, could we do farmer's markets for two months 
You know, can we do People September, October farmers markets? We could do them in the spring. Could we do that uptown um, beer festival within that parking space? Can mm-hmm. we do a food truck event? Mm-hmm. There's so many different activities that we could have if we had the right space. I know these people are doing what they're doing. We can do the same thing, if not better. We don't have to do it as big as they do. Mm -hmm. But, you know, other activities... But our pool is not... The second part to this that we have to keep in mind is this pool has to have something done. There's that the Absolutely. option of doing nothing is not an option. Right. So what can we afford to do is number one. Mm-hmm. What I don't want to say can we get away with doing because that's not necessarily what that's what we've done in the past. Right. And I think we're trying to get out of, you know, repeating the past. I think we're trying to we don't need to keep up with the Joneses, however, we do have to stay relevant in the market. We do have mm-hmm. to, this pool is not going to last five more years. I mean, each right. year we're spending 10, 15, 20, $25,000 in just repairs the little and, bits yeah. of repairs that were, mm-hmm. we are still band-aiding. Um, I mean, let's just be honest. The bottom of the pool has been cracked. Mm-hmm. It, it's just That's a matter for that can. to break apart and right. us to have to redo right. that again. Which is what Worthington pool is facing. Yeah. Their main pool is leaking crazy mm-hmm. like gallons and gallons and gallons a day right. we're leaking a little bit right oh yeah oh yeah, oh, yeah. we have multiple cracks in the bottom yeah so i thought ours isn't as bad but it's only a matter of time i we were on borrowed told, time we were told in 2020 when we were doing the baby pool renovation that the pool had about five years we so need to make and, sure this happens and well get on, and let it, it get on. we're seeing each year the amount of cost of repairs between filters and motors and all of that stuff mm-hmm. just continually Pumps. rise. At right. some point, you're not going to be able to buy filters for that pool. Right. I agree. We're or the there. crack's going to be so big that we can't repair it. Mm-hmm. And what happens, what what does that look like if that happens in the middle of a pool season? What happens if it if happens? If we get a crack in that pool in the middle of the pool season and we can't hold water in it, what does that look like for us? I mean, that... You refund everybody's that. money and then you're, you're at right. a loss of $50,000. Plus, you have to repair the pool. I'm worried right? about it happening in the wintertime with that freezing, mm-hmm. you know. It could easily... That's why they leave the water in the right. pool. But the problem is we do have to empty it out at some point. Yeah. That's when it cracked is when we emptied it out for that week. It rained so much, and it was just bad timing. Yeah. I mean, there was it was yep. nobody's to blame. It was just bad timing. So we do need a serious conversation about how we're going to finance this pool. And that's what I keep talking about with um, having... The work session can't just revolve around one or two different things. Right. We are having a work session. We are running out of time and all of these different things yeah. to have these conversations. Well, I know that we have a new group coming in, but we also, I don't know if the conversation needs, the answers aren't going to change. Mm-mm. Now, people's opinions are, are could be different, sure. but the answer as to, I, I use the word legally, what can we do? Because if you can only borrow X due to mm-hmm. debt limits and this and that, that's the serious conversation that we need to have. Okay, we can only borrow X, then what if we have X plus grants? What if we have X plus donations? Yeah. What if we, mm-hmm. maybe we get serious about trying to figure out, you know, ways to fundraise different things. You're not going to fundraise $5 million. I understand that, but mm-hmm. I don't know. We're going to sell Krispy Kreme donuts. Every house has to eat three and a half dozen donuts a day. <laughs> For the next 25 years. Yes. <laughs> so, but the serious conversation is to what can we what can we finance? What can we levy? And I, again, I don't even know what the limit is. Is there a limit to how much we can, how much is it going to raise everybody's property taxes if you put a levy on for seven million? I don't know. I, I, and you know, how much right. can you actually get residents to swallow? And what do we already have? You know, mm-hmm. we don't want to do, I, I, that's the conversation that needs to happen. And I think it needs to happen sooner rather than later because right now we're all just talking in circles. Right. None of it, I mean, at the end of the day, nothing, none of it matters if we can't borrow it, if we can't right. get X. We can dream as much as we want. If we can't pay for it, it's not happening. So, I just don't want to see that pool get dirt tossed in and we forget about it. You know? no. Oh, I don't either. Oh, no. And we all, it, it raises our property values, like it or not. Oh, yeah, it does. It does, so... <laughs> That's the one beautiful thing about having a mm-hmm. nice... Yep. 90% of real estate adds 
<laughs> like the pool or not, they use that picture. Yeah. yeah. Yep. It John is very said, true. John said he had several realtors come by this summer and take pictures. Oh, yeah. Of I believe it. Absolutely. That's the nicest so, that pool's ever Oh, I've seen it in, years. in multiple ones. I, there's, I wouldn't list one without yep. it. Yep. So, all right. All right, so five seasons, you're going to work on getting a meeting See set up. See when we can set it up. I'm going to meet with the lawnmower okay. person and just have them write us an estimate. Yeah. and we'll talk about it. Yeah. I'll bring it up for finance. Um, we'll contact that pool dues company to see if we yeah. can do a demo. Um, I think John should be there. Um, Leah, mm -hmm. Barb, you know, John, what is whoever. It do? Yeah. Yep. Let's all look at it. I'm going to run by the pool fees by John, see if we're missing anything that we've talked about. And then we need to have a serious discussion. Council does about how we're funding this. Okay. Right? Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. Cool. All right. All right. We're ready to dismiss. Yes. All right. Meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned.